Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, how are you all doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day. So we're here today with Pokemon Season 1, Episode 4, Challenge of the Samurai. Alright, well that sounds fun. Challenge of the Samurai. I can't think of a Samurai Pokemon. But let's recap which Pokemon we uh, saw slash caught. Now, when I say we, I obviously mean Ash Ketchum. And Ash Ketchum, he caught a Caterpie, uh, which evolved at the end to a Metapod. And he also caught a Pidgey. I like Pidgey. Pidgey Gen 1 is always a Pokemon that's in my party. Um, it's always a flying Pokemon that's in my party. I don't like the Sparrow evolution. The Doe Duo evolution to me just doesn't do it either. Uh, so generally I always have Pidgeys in my team and then I sort of get rid of them uh, once my... Well, if I pick a Char... If I, if I pick Charmander once my Charizard learns Fly or I get one of the Legendary Bird Trios in my team. Um... Besides that, though, I would say let us hop right in uh, to episode four, ladies and gentlemen. As always, be sure that you be sure to know that you can obviously get full length as well as early access on patreoncom slash reacts. Let's hop right in. Samurai challenge off this samurai. That was kind of a hard cut. I feel like like the the, the ending of that. Bugs. I'm, assu I'm assuming. It's gotta be used Pidgeotto, right? Not not Metapod. Alright, good. This should be a relatively easy victory, like. <laughs> He's rubbing his hands in, like, oh yeah, boy. <laughs> Poor little Weedle. Imagine just attacking someone with a sword. So did Ash catch the Weedle or not? That's the important question here. He's a samurai. What Pokemon would a samurai have? I'm assuming like a monkey or something. Ooh, it pierces through the friggin' door. Okay. Look at him like, hey, well, we'll get ya. That was close. It went finally. I would beat the next Pokemon trainer from Palettes. And you're a novice. That's why you've been waiting. I, and you're, you're the novice. Show up. Compared to those other three, novice here is a joke. Ouch! <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> what disrespect? The absolute disrespect. Amy. Awaken the Beedrills. <sighs> To protect the world from devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. To no, not again, not now. <laughs> He's got no Pokemon on him. <laughs> He's like, bro. Interrupt the team rocket motto. Maybe they'll die bomb team rocket. Match. That is guaranteed. We're never gonna see him again. Metapod versus Metapod again. That was the greatest battle of all time, I have to say. That, that was a battle that legends will be spoken of in future and years to come. Farewell. With Team Rocket thwarted for now, Ash and his friends leave the Viridian Forest and set their sights on Pewter City. Catch him, catch him, gotta catch him all. Gotta catch him all. Go, go, catch him, catch him, gotta catch him all. Gotta catch him all. Okay, catch him, catch him, gotta catch him all. Look him all. I will say this, right? I like this episode. But to me, it highlights something very important. Uh, if Metapod takes... They said here, instead of like leveling or anything of that sort, they said it takes uh, one week after becoming a Metapod, uh, it turns into a Butterfree. So that means that uh, the Samurai, his name is Samurai, um, that means that he, um, that person, never discovered... Uh, he never discovered... So no, he met Gary and the other trainers, the other Pallet, tra Pallet Town trainers who have Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Bulbasaur. He met them less than a week ago because his Metapod is obviously not evolved yet. Which is very interesting. That is very, very interesting. Um, but that, because that, that would mean that Ash is ahead of them. 
And that means Ash is ahead of them. If you feel me? Because by that logic, right? If he battled them, and we saw Metapod, if he battled them with his Metapod, and it takes a week for Metapod in, in the anime, it takes a week for him, for Metapod to turn into Butterfree, and Ash only just arrived, Ash arrived a week ago in Meridian Forest, because obviously the first thing that he saw was a, was the Caterpie, uh, it means he arrived in Meridian Forest before all the other Pilot Town trainers, including Gary. So they should be a how does that work timeline-wise? So, what I get is that he arrived in the Meridian Forest earlier than everyone else, caught Butterfree, and then essentially just walked around aimlessly in the Meridian Forest without you know knowing without knowing his way out of there. And while he was doing that, um, the other trainers went in for Samurai, went out presumably, and now he's only managed to met meet the samurai like i'm trying i'm trying to put like the timeline together right now okay because that's very odd that they said like it takes a week like that's very odd um very very odd i mean they probably didn't put, put too much thought into that completely to be completely honest but still you know to me i'm just thinking okay whereabouts is ash right now compared to all the other pilot town trainers now and we also know that all the other pilot town trainers are um they they have Charmander obviously, Bulbasaur and um, uh, Squirrel, uh, which is, which was obvious of course because you know quite frankly, quite frankly um, we, we we should know that by by this point because uh, those were the three Pokemon that were gone from Perfe from from, bleh, from Professor Oak's lab. Besides that though, besides that though, besides that though, I am very much intrigued to know which Pokemon Gary has because now I think he has one of those three. Because before I was saying like maybe he has an Eevee, but now I'm thinking, well, he probably has one of those three. Because when 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 Ash brought up uh, Gary, um, well, it was those three. There wasn't an Eevee there, so it was one of those three. So it must mean that he has one of those three Pokemon. The question is, of course, who? My my money would probably be on um, Squirtle, just because Red has you know the Red Pokemon, the, the Fire Pokemon, uh, which was Charmander. And um, the, his rival Blue had Blue, you know, had, had Squirtle. So I'm assuming they're gonna go with that theme. And we all know Ash later on gets a Charizard. Um, so it would, I think, make sense thematically as well that Gary would get um, a a Blastoise later on as well. So that's my thought process right now. I'm, I'm a little sad that the Weedle got away. To be completely honest, um, I want, I, I, I know. I know, I know that there's plenty of opportunities to get more Pokemon, but the truth is that I do want him to catch all Pokemon, um, season one, which he probably won't. <laughs> he probably won't, because he never has Mewtwo. I know that much. I know Red has Mewtwo, but I know Ash doesn't have Mewtwo. Um, so I, I do wonder how many he's gonna catch. Whether it's gonna be like an active goal of his, where he's gonna have like a hundred Pokemon by the end. If he's gonna be even close to that, if he's gonna have more than that, um, uh, we have seen him catch you know two pokemon in the last episode in episode three but he didn't catch a single one although to be fair his pokemon evolved in this episode so that's very nice to see so there is a progress a continuing progress with the pokedex which is good to see um his first pokemon battle his first pokemon battle um, if you don't include Team Rocket. His first Pokemon battle against Samurai. I'm assuming we're never going to see Samurai again. The Samurai's like, oh yeah, we'll fight again in the future. I'm pretty sure we're never going to see you again, mate. Um, but it might be. Who knows? Um, but the first Pokemon battle of Ashes. And it was a... It was a hard affair. A very hard affair. It was. <laughs> it was. A very hard affair. Very, very hard affair. But hey, hey, Pidgeotto, I feel like he's getting screwed. Right now, I'll be, I'll be honest, I feel like he's being screwed. 
uh, in, in episode three, when Ash caught him, it was like, "Yay, we, we got we got a Pidgeotto," and then lost against Team Rocket. In this episode, it's like, "Yay, Pidgeotto did good stuff against Weedle. Weedle gets away." All right, time for Pidgeotto to fight against Pinsir. Pinsir just tackles it, beats it. It's like, bro, Pidgeotto just can't catch a break. Pidgeotto just can't catch a break. Um, and obviously, Pikachu refusing to work, I would have set it free right there and then. When it refused to work, I would be like, "Okay, no longer my Pokemon." <laughs> no longer my Pokemon. You refuse to work? All right. We we see how you can refuse to work. Yeah, I mean, I would make a great boss and a, and a great Pokemon trainer. I'm like, oh, you, you refuse to work? Oh, brilliant. Out. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you all thought about this episode. I will see you all in the next one, everyone. Until then, have a nice day. Peace out. And as always, Hey everybody, if you like this video, please be sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe and if you want to see more of these kind of videos, be sure to check out Patreon to get one week early access as well as full length. But until next time everybody, peace out and have a nice day.